China is in the midst of a tsunami-like outbreak that's extremely severe. But strangely, the Communist Party's military, the People's Liberation Army, or PLA, is showing more aggressiveness than usual. In December 2022, the CCP's military operations spiked, causing unrest in several parts of the Indo-Pacific. Why is this? In a dramatic move, the PLA expanded its harassment of Taiwan's air defense identification zone in December. Compared to a war between Russia and Ukraine, an attack on Taiwan by the CCP would be far more disruptive, as countries around the world generally rely on high-end chips made in Taiwan, and the Taiwan Strait is surrounded by key trade routes in the Indo-Pacific region. Once it's in a state of war, the CCP is bound to encounter comprehensive sanctions. China's economy would suffer a serious blow while dragging down the entire world. This is also the place where the White House is most concerned about the outbreak of conflict. On December 26, 2022, Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense said that 71 Chinese communist aircraft, including fighter jets and drones, entered Taiwan's air defense identification zone within a 24-hour period. Of those aircraft, 47 crossed the center line of the Taiwan Strait, which is an unofficial buffer zone between the two sides of the Taiwan Strait. Taiwan's Defense Ministry also said seven Communist Navy ships were spotted near Taiwan. The Chinese military has also sent early warning aircraft, electronic warfare, and anti-submarine aircraft and drones to Taiwan's Southern Air Defense Identification Zone. Taiwan's official central news agency said it was the largest incursion by the Chinese Air Force to date. President Tsai Ing-wen said on December 27 that Taiwan will extend compulsory military service to one year from four months in 2024 due to the rising threat the democratically governed island faces from its giant neighbor, China. I have to admit that this is an incredibly difficult decision, but as president, as the commander-in-chief, protect the national security and ensure national interest, allowing Taiwan to survive eternally and that the people can live a free and democratic life for generations to come is an unavoidable responsibility of mine as the president. Before that, on December 22, the Ministry of National Defense of the Republic of China said that the CCP military sent 39 aircraft and three ships around Taiwan within a 24-hour period. At least one of the drones crossed the center line of the strait and the rest flew to Taiwan's Southwest Air Defense Identification Zone, crossing the Bashi Channel eastward deep into southeastern airspace. Such a course of action hasn't been common in the past, but in 2022 such escalations have become more common. On December 26, the White House said the U.S. was concerned about Chinese military activity near Taiwan, calling the move provocative and destabilizing and stressing the risk of misjudgment and regional destabilization. A senior Taiwanese official familiar with security planning in the region told Reuters that Taiwan assesses that the CCP has staged a military provocation to express its anger over the new U.S. National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2023. The act has increased U.S. military assistance to Taiwan. The CCP has never given up the option of unifying Taiwan by force. Taiwan, for its part, strongly opposes the CCP's claim of sovereignty, saying that only the 23 million people of Taiwan can decide their own future. The U.S. is Taiwan's most important international supporter and arms supplier, despite having no formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan. U.S. arms sales to Taiwan have been one of the things that have annoyed the CCP the most. On December 24, 2022, President Biden signed the National Defense Authorization Act into law. The annual bill contains an unprecedented provision for military assistance to Taiwan, including a provision that would authorize the U.S. to provide Taiwan with up to U.S. $2 billion in military assistance each year from 2023 to 2027 totaling up to $10 billion over five years if the Secretary of State certifies that Taiwan is increasing its own defense budget. The bill also includes a new foreign military financing loan to accelerate the development of Taiwan's weapons acquisition and training programs. This is a provision that has never appeared in previous defense authorization bills. Taiwan's Ministry of Defense issued a statement welcoming and thanking the U.S. Congress for passing and President Biden for signing the bill.
Naturally, Taiwan's government is also strengthening its defense budget in an effort to increase its military strength, with the overall defense budget for 2023 reaching NT 586.3 billion, or approximately US 19 billion, or nearly 2.4% of GDP, and a 13.9% increase from 2022. The Taiwan question is the core of China's core interests, the foundation of the political foundation of China-U.S. relations, and the first untouchable red line in the bilateral relations. Vice Minister Xu Feng once again stated his solemn position on such wrong actions as U.S. high-level exchanges with Taiwan, U.S. arms sales with Taiwan, and U.S. enactment of Taiwan-related bills, and urged the U.S. to abide by the One China Principle and the three China-U.S. joint communiques with concrete actions. In addition to the hot spot in the Taiwan Strait, military confrontation between China and Japan is becoming a new hot spot. In other words, the hot spot in the Taiwan Strait has expanded to East Asian hotspots, which means that the CCP will take the initiative to fight three at once Taiwan, the US, and Japan. On December 17th, China's Liaoning aircraft carrier fleet, including the Liaoning aircraft carrier, arrived in the sea about 260 kilometers southwest of Daitu Island, Okinawa Prefecture, Japan. The CCP aircraft carrier has been hovering in the waters here for several days, and its intention to target Japan is evident. In theory, the carrier-based aircraft can threaten the Japanese islands, especially the military bases of the U.S. and Japan in Okinawa. At the same time, the CCP's aircraft carrier could also simulate a possible naval battle with the U.S. Navy and the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force in the open sea. On December 19th, two H-6 bombers of the PLA crossed the Miyako Strait and arrived in the waters near Japan's Daitu Island. They could be simulating a joint exercise with the Liaoning aircraft carrier. This was a strategic challenge started by the CCP just days after Japan announced a defense budget increase and a new defense strategy. The Beijing government's official media referred to this operation as crossing the first island chain. The CCP is actually simulating a simultaneous attack on Japan's Okinawa and Taiwan, which shows the general outline of its entire plan to attack Taiwan. In other words, the PLA is preparing to attack Okinawa and Taiwan simultaneously, challenging the US, Japan, and Taiwan in one move. The CCP aircraft carrier detours to the east of the Ryukyu Islands in Japan, and the CCP military planes detour to the east of Taiwan, and may directly fight the U.S. military outside the first island chain. Any CCP military action against Okinawa will immediately trigger the U.S.-Japan Security Treaty. To prevent U.S. and Japanese reinforcements, the CCP is preparing to attack Okinawa first, which is more like creating a replica of the Pearl Harbor incident. On December 7, 1941, Japan attacked the U.S. military base at Pearl Harbor and then launched a full-scale attack on Southeast Asia, the Central Pacific, and the South Pacific. Such a plan almost succeeded at its initial stage. Now we can see that one of the plans of the CCP to seize Taiwan by force is to prepare a sneak attack on the U.S. and Japanese bases in Okinawa to capture Taiwan successfully. It's no small ambition. China received a quick response from Japan. On December 23rd, the Japanese government approved a record $863 billion budget for the next fiscal year, pushed up by increased military spending and higher social security costs for the country's fast-aging population. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's cabinet aims to double Japan's annual defense spending to 2% of GDP within five years to deal with an ever-assertive China and an unpredictable North Korea. From December 21st to 27th, the PLA's Eastern Theater deployed its fleet to conduct a large joint military exercise with the warships of the Russian Northern Fleet heading south. The location was a joint exercise in the sea east of Joshan to Taizhou, which is far from the Taiwan Sea. The goal shouldn't be to support Taiwan Sea operations, but rather to seize control of the East China Sea. The East China Sea is directly opposite Japan's Okinawa, making a move equivalent to forming an east-west pincer attack with a Liaoning aircraft carrier. In the joint air defense drill, Chinese and Russian navies sent elite ships and air defense formations, effectively responded to various threats, coordinated closely and commanded smoothly, and completed the intended drill plan, which can be said to be a good display of the latest achievements of both sides in the air defense field. The Russian-Chinese drills signify stronger military ties between China and Russia. The CCP seems to take advantage of the Russian invasion of Ukraine to rope in Russia and create some sort of power. 
By going along with the CCP drills, the Russian fleet is supposed to be driving the CCP hard into a fierce confrontation with the US and Japan, which would help Russia relieve some of the pressure in the Russo-Ukrainian war. But the probability of Russian participation in the war is very small. The main Russian forces have already pressed into the Western Front in Ukraine, and it's still unknown how it will end. The Kremlin is unlikely to wish for another war on the Eastern Front. We see that the CCP, as the host, has sent a fleet that looks inferior to the Russian fleet. This prideful Red Party suddenly doesn't seem to care about losing face. The reality is it must have intentionally lowered its specifications to minimize the impact. Instead, Russia wanted to make as much noise as possible to draw the American military's attention and bring the CCP to the forefront. The CCP's drills were chosen before Christmas, apparently to avoid the US military as much as possible. The US military determined that Beijing wouldn't attack Taiwan during the difficult winter months and returned the aircraft carrier USS Reagan to port. In a December 22nd statement, US Indo-Pacific Command said, we, along with our international allies and partners, are closely tracking Chinese military activities in the South China Sea and the Philippine Sea, as well as ongoing Russian-Chinese drills in the East China Sea. But it also acknowledged that our soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen, coast guardsmen and guardians, and those of our allies are spending this holiday season preserving a free and open Indo-Pacific that benefits all. The Japanese Ministry of Defense released pictures of the J-15 fighter jets that took off from the Liaoning carrier. One can see only air-to-air -air missiles on board with no ground or sea strike weapons. In other words, China's carrier-based aircraft so far don't have the ability of airstrikes, but the carrier itself is an extremely easy target. No wonder the US carriers dare to be let loose in the Western Pacific. If the CCP deploys this way in actual warfare, the US military won't need to deploy any carriers, but simply launch airstrikes from land or submarine attacks underwater, which would have been enough to take care of the CCP carriers. The J-15 is no match for the F-35 and possibly the F-15, not to mention the F-22. The PLA is unlikely to detect the US and Japanese submarines, leaving its carriers vulnerable and easy targets. All that is to say, the US military is also happy to see Japan formally consider China as an adversary. The CCP's provocation will only make Japan more vigilant. The Japanese self-defense forces will be firmly locked in the Miyako Strait and won't hesitate to launch counterattacks against the PLA. By normal logic, if the CCP directly confronted the US, it should have tried to bring Japan to its side. In this plan, the CCP chose to confront Japan directly, and the probability of success is really low. China is in the midst of an epidemic outbreak. It would be unwise for the CCP military to conduct large-scale drills at this time, because the risk of an outbreak in the military afterward is high. However, according to the CCP's values and logic, soldiers in the army are asked to give their everything to the party's interests as long as they are still capable of action. This is so in the event of an epidemic outbreak, and even something more dramatic won't change that. In the second half of 2022, North Korea seems to have become a household item in test launching missiles, with the CCP supposedly behind it and Russia likely strongly encouraging it to distract the US. North Korea has also repeatedly provoked South Korea by launching military aircraft, firing artillery shells, and releasing drones. In the latest development, the South Korean president said on December 27th that the intrusion of multiple North Korean drones into South Korean airspace shows that the South Korean military has been very poorly trained over the past few years and needs to strengthen its air defense system in the future. He directed the creation of a special unit to deal with drones as soon as possible. I believe that China has enough capability to affect North Korea's decision, not only a military aspect but also economically. However, it is up to China's decision that to what extent it will influence North Korea and how much it is going to contribute to the peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. In other words, South Korea should know that the CCP is behind North Korea's provocation. The CCP has been trying to rope in South Korea to confront the US. The CCP instructed North Korea to make trouble for the same purpose of contending with the US, but it ends up making South Korea threaten first. North Korea may not really dare to go to war against South Korea, but it's obligated to follow the CCP's orders. The Kim regime may only want to take advantage of the situation to get some leverage from the US or ask for money and food from South Korea. Russia is not in a place for another war, but it's trying to push the CCP to the forefront against the US. China, Russia, and North Korea appear to be allies, but in the end, it's the CCP itself who is at the front line. 
In contrast to the loose alliance of China, Russia, and North Korea, the U.S., Japan, and South Korea have actually formed a military triangle in Northeast Asia. U.S. F-35A warplanes have been deployed to South Korea several times. U.S. warplanes are the closest to Beijing if they strike from South Korea, and the threat to Beijing is significant. China is shrouded in an economic recession and a tsunami-like outbreak, but the CCP doesn't seem to find it chaotic enough. Xi has been named the chief accelerator of the Communist Party's demise. It seems well justified if you look at what has been happening in China. She has been demanding the military focus all energy on war preparation, and all efforts are channeled toward war. While the current CCP military operations look like a calculated propaganda effort to distract domestic attention with military actions, the CCP media coverage of these military exercises also demonstrates a clear intent to show that the CCP still has a strong military presence to stabilize Chinese society in the face of the outbreak. In the international context, however, these military actions have little real value and demonstrate more of a provocative posture and a lack of capability. It might even lead to more trouble down the road, including heightened alertness in the U.S., Japan, and South Korea, and an intensified arms race. On October 27, 2022, after the 20th National Congress of the CCP, the U.S. Department of Defense released three military reports. They are the National Defense Strategy, the Nuclear Posture Review, and the Missile Defense Review. It's considered by outsiders as the U.S. integrated deterrence of the CCP at the implementation level. The scope of its application is not only the traditional land, sea, and air threats, but also includes gray areas and a variety of small and large conflicts, which is a holistic deterrent. Regardless of how or when the Russian-Ukrainian war ends, the Russian military has been greatly damaged and will sooner or later fall from the second position of world military power, making another major war in Europe less likely. And as long as the CCP remains in power, the hot spots in East Asia won't subside. The US, Russia, China, India, Japan, and South Korea are currently considered the top six military powers in the world, followed by Britain and France. From the Taiwan Strait, the East China Sea, and the Philippine Sea to the Korean Peninsula, the military hotspots in East Asia will only get hotter. The unveiling of the US B-21 stealth bomber in late December 2022 marks another widening of the gap between the military power of China and the US. The B-21 has a large deterrent effect on China, including nuclear strike capability and conventional strike force. In addition, the B-21's deterrent capability comes from the latest technology, dramatically increasing the ability to be invisible and not easily detected by the PLA. Japan's deployment of long-range missiles, receipt of more fifth-generation warplanes, and cooperation with the UK and Italy in developing sixth-generation warplanes mark a significant change in the military power comparison between China and Japan. Now that the CCP is in a constant internal crisis and has to confront and start an arms race with the US and Japan simultaneously, the CCP will only be dragged down more quickly, which should become another gas pedal fueling the fall of the CCP regime.